Hi, I'm Professor David Farina. In this lecture, we're going to be talking all about the Earth and its moon, in particular, Earth's geology and surface activity. Let's get started. Throughout the Earth's surface, we can see that there are places where there are high numbers of both volcanic and earthquake activity. These locations are directly related to what we call tectonic plates. Earth's tectonic plates, as you can see here, are also in motion. And through these motions, we can have an understanding of how Earth is changing and what's going on inside. These plate boundaries are of vast interest to geologists as it helps us to understand the theory of plate tectonics, which we'll be discussing next. Now, before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about the history of Earth's geologic activity. Um, the formation of Earth somewhere on the 4.6 billion years ago time period, and for a vast distance of time, we had what we would consider to be the heavy bombardment when Earth was undergoing massive impacts by objects during the early stages of the solar system. Now, Oldest fossil life is right around here at the 13 and a half billion year mark. And this fossil life would have been single celled and mostly found in the oceans. It was not up until much more recently where we start to see uh, first animals emerging on land, uh, the breaking up of the supercontinent, which we'll talk about here coming soon of Pangaea, Notice how close the age of the dinosaurs is on this scale to now. So we are much, much more closely related to the age of the dinosaurs than we are to anything else in this time scale. The dinosaurs are recent. So on the surface of the Earth, uh, geologic activity, the plate tectonics, as we discussed, um, cause the oceans and land to move around. Uh, and the underlying cause of this has to do with convection cells within the Earth's upper mantle called the asthenosphere. So at some places, you'll notice the Earth's convection cells are moving toward each other. And this causes one plate to ride over top of the other in something called a subduction zone. And at a subduction zone, we end up with an ocean trench and usually a line of volcanic activity along that trench. That would be what we would consider to be an active margin, an area where uh, there's active activity right now happening. On the other side of the continent here, we have what we would consider to be a passive margin. And passive margins generally are where the oceans are growing in size uh, at something called a mid-ocean ridge. And this is an area, notice, where the convection cells are moving apart from one another. And as a result, we have a crack forming in the Earth's uh, crust, and it's opening up, allowing more ocean to be produced along a volcanic ridge system. The ocean ridge system, by the way, is the biggest of all of the mountain change on Earth, mountain ranges on Earth, and it looks like a big zipper in the oceans if you look at the ocean floor. So we have places where the oceans are being formed, we have oceans that are being shrinking, and the Earth maintains its size. So here's that mid-ocean ridge system, that zipper as I discussed, and it is found throughout the Earth. Here's another part of it, and you'll see it's also dotted by volcanic activity. And you may have heard of the Ring of Fire in the Pacific. This is the area where subduction zones are occurring throughout the edges of the plate. So we've got mid-ocean ridges and we've got subduction zones. Sorry about that. So the plate in motion to the Pacific Ocean, we have melting, we have the formation of these island arcs, or we have the formation of uh, continental island arc, uh, continental volcanic arcs, um, when we have subduction zones. We have mid-ocean ridges, we've got the Atlantic Ocean as our example, and South America and Africa being pushed apart. Now this means, if you reverse time, that at one point South America and Africa were together. And in fact, that is the case. 
So there are four main stages of the evolution of the Earth. Um, we've got the differentiation of Earth. We've got that young Earth being heavily bombarded. We have the flooding um, of the oceans by magma as volcanic activity took place and slowly the landforms make, being made. And once landforms were made, we started to produce a supercontinent called Pangaea. Pangaea was around about just over 200 million years ago or so. And at the uh, times of the dinosaurs, 65 million years ago, it had already started to break apart. So during the age of the dinosaurs, Pangaea was in the process of breaking up and eventually separated the continents into their state that they are in today. So thanks for watching the Earth and its Moon, Earth's Geology and Surface Activity. If you like this video and would like to learn more, please hit that subscribe button, like this video, and if you'd like to hear about every time I make a video, please click that little bell at the bottom and get a notification each time I do. Thanks a lot and have a great rest of your day.